Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about a great JavaScript UI library, WebEx, or WebEx. I might be pronouncing that incorrectly. If I if I am, I apologize, because WebEx is like a, a video platform. Uh, I think WebEx is a JavaScript UI library framework that has over a hundred different UI widgets. Some of them are super advanced. We're going to be diving in a little bit about what they have to offer and how I'm going to be using it in an upcoming project. So you can even see just by this little uh, little uh, computer screen here that they got quite a bit going on here. So you can clearly make um, you know quite the unique dashboard. Uh, one additional thing about this is this is a, a, sort of a small UI library, you know, personal project sort of thing. This is a, a company that's been doing it for a while, has quite a few some of the biggest companies in the world, such as Microsoft, Bank of America, and I'm sure many more. And you can see here. And I, one thing I, I like is just good UI UX, and they they truly are killing it with their their setup here. Because I, I love everything about this, where you can click on here and just see some example of how you might zoom out, where you can click on here and see some of their code about how like how easy it is to create this this uh, side dashboard here. Or you can have something like this and see something, or you can see something like this and see how it's going to be putting it out there, um, and injecting it into there but you can see they have charts calendars and over 100 different ones now some of these um and i'm sure there's a ch we'll come across a chart in a second but of the 100 about 67 are available for free and then they have a paid version for sort of uh some of their more advanced ones but you can see they have quite a bit going on here with all their sort of ui stuff and let me get down here so you can see some of their more advanced stuff like the kanban board I love this. I absolutely love this. I'd love to have my own Kanban board. Um, their drag and drop pivot, file manager, mobile scheduler, pretty cool. Um, so why might you want to use WebEx? Well, other than the fact that it's a nice, good looking, easy to use UI framework, it has all the stuff that you would expect. It's It runs, um, you know, ex meets uh, accessibility standards. It's easily, it easily, comes and can be used in any sort of third-party JavaScript framework, um, Angular, React, Vue, Backbone, and that's because it's built off JavaScript, and you should be able to use JavaScript in all of those. Now, uh, if you wanted to get started with it, so like the one thing I found uh, about their site that sort of threw me for a loop as I was going through it is that there's just so much to do that it's hard to to see what's going on all the time. So. You, you can uh, simplify things and see some of their complex uh, widgets here, like the spreadsheet or the file manager or the Kanban board. You just see some of their web apps here and um, the, their QA dashboard, their uh, bank app. And so you can see some of these things in action. Um, web, web desktop UI, that's kind of sick. Uh, like the fact that you can just jump between this and see like one just make one look like a desktop is just something I really like. Um, how do I get out of here? I'm in the demos page now. Uh, but how how do how do you get started, right? Um, let me go ahead and bring up this other page over here. Oh no, this other page over here. One of these pages, I have something to help you get started. So if you're interested in getting started with WebEx and just seeing what they have to offer. Uh, you can uh, go to webex hub slash webex and see their their free public version. They have a bunch of other like quick start guides here, which is nice. It's always nice when someone has a good quick start. I tell you, man, as somebody who um, has used many of frameworks, many UI frameworks, many just npm packages, many of everything. Um, for whatever reason, a lot of people s skimp on a good quick start. It's like people are trying to start your stuff, and over here you're you're going crazy and not not doing it um, so like I'll be integrating this into a project down the road probably when I redo my um, I, I need to do a portfolio site and so when I redo it I was thinking about using WebEx for that and I'll be wrapping this in an angular component to use there as well and um, 
one thing that's also uh let me go ahead and throw this up because i this is what they sent me because i asked i said hey i want to know what's the difference between pro and standard right because i you know not everyone's going to be able to afford to spend money on a on a um ui framework you know some of us are are broke some of us need something free and it's important to have uh, a solid understanding of the pro versus the standard so you can see here uh um, there's a whole article about it which they wrote up and I'll include this in the description below so you can get up and go and uh, get up and get running with it and um, services what are you guys doing services here oh okay so they do other stuff as well I was going to say uh, but yeah if you're interested in trying out a new UI framework you see it's pretty easy it's um, just using some basic uh, basic um, you know JavaScript at the end of the day, and you want to throw it in there, have it easily be used. They have uh, a couple different versions: WebEx, WebEx Jet, and you can um, get up and going and have this very, these very easily configurable and um, items to throw into your project to start. So, um, as always, guys, thank you so much for uh, watching the video, and thank you to WebEx for sponsoring it. Um, it's always cool when uh, I get cool projects that come onto here and like oh i didn't know this was a thing and i i didn't before they contacted me but uh, i'm definitely going to be checking it out in more detail because you know how many of us have used other ui frameworks the same old same old this and they're not even all that great and then you have a company that's really taking time to develop some pretty cool stuff here um you know they have all the standard stuff like you would expect like windows and pop-ups and all that sort of stuff but then again you can have um you can have additional, like, uh, you know, you have your standard modals, right? And then you could have additional things that are a little bit more unique, like um, the uh, trees or the color, the custom color picker or color color board. Oddly enough, I needed one of these in a project not too long ago, and I had to build something custom. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so you have all your additional sort of hyphy things, and um, you know, and some of them are pro, right? But for the most part, like this Google Maps, this is this is great. I have I've had to do Google Maps at two different jobs before, and it's always sort of a, a hassle to get it up and going. So, but anyway, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the video. Comment, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I'll see you next time. Bye. All right. I think before we end this video, we should definitely do a demo of how we might set up some thing using the WebEx framework. Uh, you can see here that we have a CDN to a style sheet for it, as well as the JavaScript file. Then down below, we have a secondary script tag. So um, you can see that we're going to, you know, just a basic HTML. There's nothing going on in this page, completely empty. Now, how you typically start this, or one way I could say, is you could treat it very much like you would if you were familiar with jQuery where you'd have this document dot ready tags except it's webex dot ready and then you have to have a constructor for what it is that you're trying to build now in our case we're just gonna build a simple table and do that um, I'm gonna copy over some data from the documentation here called film set paste that in here change that to a cost but you can see that it has an array of objects an ID a title a year so on and so forth save that and we're going to collapse that but that's going to be the data that we're going to end up displaying in the table now that we have that what we can do is we can use this webex.ui nested within the ready statement and that's going to take in an object now from here it's really up to us to decide what it is that we want to construct in our object now um, you know one thing that we can do is a simple table which we can say what type of view so in our webex ui it's going to take in an object and our object is going to have a couple things it's either going to have columns or it's going to have rows now let's start with our rows where or excuse me our columns where we have an object in here and we're going to have this calls and in calls we're going to have an array here in our columns and what we want is our table object within here this is the column and row sort of part is going to make it easy for you to set up your you know you don't really have to worry about 
your uh, responsive aspects. And so this is part of what's going on here. So we're going to have this view part. We're going to tell it we want it to be of list type. We're going to give it an ID as well so we can target it if needed. And we'll just go ahead and call it my list. The So the view is the table, right? The list. Um, and then we're going to give it a template. Select true means that you can select it. So I'm going to paste in this because... Uh, so you can see here. So this select true means that uh, you can select the row. So CSS property. We'll go ahead and set a height here. I don't know. How about 400 for 400 pixels, right? No PX on that, just a number. And then finally, the data that we want to pass in here, which is our film set. So if I set this all up correctly and we refresh our page, we should get a table here. No, it's not working. I wonder if it's because I have it in here. Let me see if I paste it over here. If it, Huh. Let's see here. Let me copy the path real quick. Might be the extension that I'm working with. Okay, yeah, it is the extension. So you can see here, close that, that you, sometimes you get helpful error messages. In this case, it's not very helpful, but... I, as I was playing around with this, I really did like that this was a feature in here. This is just saying like, hey, please use like a local server basically. Um, and you can see we have our table and our data and we're able to select it. And we could do something much more complex as well. Uh, let's say we wanted to add a row above that and we wanted to um, include maybe some selections for how we're going to manipulate the data. Let's open this back up and we'll go ahead and close this for now and close this we could go in here and we could do rows and we could add some buttons or actually a rows is going to be an array as well an array of objects comma uh, and then columns is going to go into rows now so we'll go ahead and take this out so once you have rows a row has columns and so we're going to fix our data structure a little bit here paste that in like so and oops, forgot to put an object so there we go and now that we've done that within our rows before we hit our columns we can create another object here that is simply going to take in uh, a toolbar and so I'm going to copy and paste some of this in just because it's a lot of typing it's a lot of data models so one of the great things about this is it's very uh, dynamic and easy to set up, but there's a lot of typing associated with it. Not the biggest deal. But what we have here is we're telling it the type. We have an ID associated with and then the elements within the toolbar. So you'll see here that we're creating three buttons with equal widths. And oh, here's. And remember what I was telling you about like helpful bugs? You have a trailing comma or null element in the configure, which is what I just saw as I was going through here. And you could see that, oh, I did, right? Right here is blowing up. And I was like, what is going on here? But now, when we refresh, you can see that we have these nice save, delete, clear buttons that we can then hook up some functionality down the road for maybe when we select this to delete this element. So it's, at, it's as easy as that to get up and going and have some nice looking UI um, elements and you can see as we go to uh, various various um, you know they have it mobile in this case we're doing a list with two, which isn't really too uh, mobile friendly but you can interact with that so that's uh, that's a real quick example of how you might get started using this UI framework Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course. Get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.